So far, we've learnt how to use the switch patch to transition between two states. But how do we go between more than two? In a tab bar, for example. We're going to rebuild this Instagram compose modal to learn how to do this and learn two core patch types whilst doing so. Make sure you download the files that come with this tutorial if you want to follow along with the same material. So starting with the lesson files, we've already set up the basics. We have our three screens placed next to each other. I'm just going to scrub through the exposition of the screens group to show you this. And we also have our tab bar set up with three tabs, one for each of these screens. Usually we would use a switch patch to switch between states, but a switch only supports two states, meaning that we could only actually switch between two tabs. We have three tabs to switch between, so there isn't a place for us to tell our prototype to go to this third state. Let's insert an option switch by double tapping on the patch editor, typing option switch and press return. An option switch supports as many inputs as we need and lets us use interactions to change between these three options. So we know our three different options to switch between a library, photo, and a video. Let's connect a touch interaction for each of these tabs to an input on the option switch respectively. So let's open the tab bar group, hover over library, click on touch and then tap, connect the tap to the first input, then do the same for photo, touch and then tap, to the second input, and then the same for video, touch and then tap, and then to the third and last input to the option switch. And just make sure that you've been adding interactions for the tab bar groups instead of the actual screens. You should be able to see that tapping on a particular label causes that particular option to become the output of the option switch. Options or indexes in origami count from zero. So the first is zero, the second is one, and the third is two, and so on if we had more. All right, so now that we can switch between options and have them pass through as the output of our option switch, how do we act on that? Let's add an option picker to our patch editor by double tapping in the patch editor, typing option picker and then pressing return, and then connecting the option output of the option switch to the option input of the option picker. Next, let's control or right click on the option picker to change the number of inputs to match that of the option switch. We know our option switch has three inputs because we have three different tab positions. So let's select three. And to best explain option picker, I think it's best if we input the positions of each of our screens. So we know our first screen is going to be at zero. Our second screen is going to be at, let's scrub here to see, minus 375. So let's make our second input minus 375. And lastly, our third screen, the video screen is going to be at minus 750. So let's make that our last input, minus 750. All right, so let's click on our three tab labels now and keep an eye out for the output of the option picker. We're getting three states outputted with useful values. These are positions for our screens layer. The option picker receives which option we've last switched to and then finds the corresponding input in its patch. And then lastly, outputs that value. So for example, if we're on the photo tab, we're at the second input, which is option one, and then the option picker will look for index one. So the first one is zero, the second one is one, and then it will output that value. So just to let that sink in, if I chose the last tab, that's the second option or option two, sorry, because the first one is zero, second is one, and the third is two. The option picker will count down its inputs. So the first one is zero, the second is one, and the third is two, and then it will output that option value, which happens to be minus 750. 
All right, so if you still don't understand this, don't worry. Let's connect the output of our option picker to the position value of our screens, the X position to be exact. Let's see this visually. So let's click through each of our tabs. So we have library, photo, and video. Keep an eye on the option switch and the option picker, as well as the layer property patch as we do this. All right, so we've learnt the core of using option switch and option picker and using them together. To add animation to ease the transitions, we can simply add an animation patch between the option picker output and layer property patch. So let's do this now. I'm just gonna move this over to the side, double tap on the patch editor and type in animation. Let's then just make a little bit more room here. Okay, so I know I don't want any bounciness on this. This doesn't really matter. You can change whichever values you like. I'm gonna make the speed a little bit faster. And then I'm going to delete this connection and replace it with the option picker output zero. And in this case, going to the number input on pop animation. And then the progress of our pop animation going to the screen's position, position X, which will replace this existing connection. So let's just put this in place and try clicking through our tabs now. All right, perfect. So what's happening is we're transitioning between screens like we were before using the option switch and option picker. We're just easing those transitions. So there's a little bit of animation between them now. Both option switch and option picker support many different types, colors, positions, booleans, images, etc. So there's a whole heap of different things you can use these for. Explore the examples to see how others have used these two patches beyond things like tab switching. Also check out some of the pre-built components in Origami, such as the iOS tab bar from which you can extend upon.